It's a fight to take down the world's biggest strongman. The ultimate victory from us would be Russia without Vladimir Putin. <laughs> and it's led by the man who claims Putin tried to kill him. Alexei Navalny has flown back to a prison cell and branded President Putin the world's biggest thief. Can Navalny defeat Putin? Can he even survive? He is in custody of that very people who tried to poison and kill him just less than six months ago. Here is a guy of extraordinary courage. It's an absolutely archetypal myth, a hero fighting a tyrant. In the depth of winter, Russia is stirring. Since late January, protests have broken out across the country, sparked by the arrest of Alexei Navalny, who the Kremlin insists is a nobody. But thanks to this nobody, people are calling their president a thief. The crowd is moving to Motorovskaya Tishina. That's the prison where Alexei Navalny is now being held. Yeah. Natasha Romi is a young Moscow lawyer who wouldn't normally risk arrest, but she's come out today to protest what she sees as a lawless regime. Woo! We have a citizen who's been poisoned, who's been almost killed, and then returned to his homeland and prisoned. This is over all limits. The Kremlin has shut down the centre to try to stop people gathering, moving in thousands of riot police and troops. All the downtown metro stations are closed and they keep closing them during the day. So we have to walk our way through. It's around two, three kilometres, I guess. Maybe five, I'm not sure. So already downtown, there's a huge concentration of police forces and they're arresting people, they're arresting protesters. But we'll see how it's going to go. I hope it's all going to go peacefully. We're not there to fight. <laughs> Police forces are moving towards downtown. <laughs> they constantly check for messages on how to evade roadblocks. And there are no coordinators of protests because the majority of coordinators was arrested after last week's protest. It's as if the all-powerful Kremlin is frightened of its own people. You can see how the power is getting scared. I think it's not about Navalny exactly. It's more about the Putin regime that has been present for past 20 years and it's been enough. Three years ago, I followed Alexei Navalny as he was building the infrastructure to challenge Putin. The lawyer and politician was setting up offices in 40 cities, staffed by passionate aides and volunteers. He's a completely new type of politician in Russia. We've never seen anything like this. Everything about him says, look, I'm just the same as you. I've come from the same background. I'm not even a Moscovite. I'm not part of this elite. I'm not part of this closed circle of insider deals. Yeah. 
И я не хочу. Я иду на выборы, объединяя этих людей. Я вот езжу из города в город и, в город и говорю, ребят, хватит терпеть. Сколько мы будем ждать? Сейчас я туда схожу, потом вернусь. At the time, he wanted to run for president, but a trumped-up fraud charge and a suspended prison sentence meant he was barred from office. Navalny told me it didn't matter. Navalny was clearly working on a long-term plan. At the time, I wondered if he'd survive long enough to complete it. We're getting reports that opposition politician Alexei Navalny is in a coma in a Siberian hospital with suspected poisoning. Last August, Navalny fell mortally ill while flying back from a tour of Siberia. Fearing the worst, his wife Yulia pleaded to evacuate him to a hospital outside Russia. This situation Алексей не дают нам выдать. Мы считаем, что очевидно, что что-то скрывают от нас. Мы требуем, чтобы немедленно Алексея отдали из этой больницы, и мы увезли к врачи, его к врачам, которым мы доверяем. We straight away assumed that this is the poisoning, because I mean, what else? His close aide Maria Pevchik suspected they were waiting for the poison to pass through his system. We just knew for sure that if that is the poisoning, that no one um, is going to investigate it. We knew that Russian governments of the Russian state wouldn't um, investigate it for sure. Maria Pevchik heads Navalny's corruption investigations. She and her team rushed to his hotel room to search for evidence. We just asked the hotel administration to let us in into his room. Uh, it hasn't been cleaned yet and we just grabbed everything we could grab from his room. We took trash, essentially, from his room, packaged it, sealed it, tried to, you know, not touch it with our bare hands. After intense international pressure, authorities finally allowed Navalny to be medivaced to Germany. Maria took the samples for testing. One of the bottles that I grabbed from his uh, bedside table um, was later tested at the Bundeswehr lab, that's an army lab in Germany, and this is where they found a trace of uh, Novichok, the chemical nerve agent. Now, the significance of Novichok, that to you meant the Kremlin must be responsible? Absolutely. Uh, Novichok is, 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 is essentially just, it's pretty much just Putin's signature uh, on, on, on this crime. Um, it's very easy and very obvious that and uh, no one apart from, from the state has access to this sort of things. Putin denied any involvement. Второе, если бы фигурант, о котором вы говорите, действительно власти во всяком случае хотели бы кого-то отравить, вряд ли бы отправили его на лечение в Германию. Не так ли? Navalny emerged from his coma determined to find the assassins and expose them on his popular YouTube channel. Привет, это Навальный. Я знаю, кто хотел меня убить. Я знаю, где они живут, я знаю, где они работают, я знаю их настоящие имена, я знаю их поддельные имена. У меня есть их фотографии. Working with the investigations group Bellingcat, his team soon pointed the finger at the Russian security service, the FSB. Среди пассажиров нескольких рейсов Москва-Новосибирск 13-14 августа мы ищем тех, кто... They identified the FSB agents who'd been shadowing Navalny in Siberia. Navalny set out to trick them into confessing. Здрасте, меня зовут Устинов Максим Сергеевич. Я помощник Николая Платоновича Патрушева. Sitting alongside Maria Pevchik, he called FSB team members, posing as a senior official debriefing the operation. членов команды, что у нас пошло не так? Почему в Томске был с Навальным полный провал? 
ваше мнение напишите, скажите мне, пожалуйста, я запишу, а позже уже в рапорте укажете. To everyone's amazement, one of the agents fell for it, discussing how they had applied the poison and removed the evidence. Во-первых, вещи где? Что с вещами? Что с вещами? Ну, Навальновские вещи где? Ну, были вот, я их ранее раз видел в Омске самом. А, это... Ну, мы там ездили, работали. Ну, занимали, обрабатывали. He's the guy who's doing cleanup. So he would go to the place where Alexei went afterwards and um, just clean up. The agent even revealed where the poison had been placed. Хорошо, скажите мне, пожалуйста, какой предмет одежды это? На какой предмет одежды главный был акцент? На самый самый рискованный в теории предмет одежды какой? Трусы. Трусы. Ну по внутренним работам. Ну по крайней мере там это обработка делала. Ну вот. To be honest, that was the most unbelievable day in in my career. А мы ничего такого не обсуждали особенного. Ну, it's sad and funny and good at the same time. Well, I mean, sad in terms of what level of you know security services we really have in Russia, and good in terms of fact that you know it helped us to um, solve the crime, which, to be honest, I I barely hoped we would ever be able to solve. Navalny was now safe in Berlin. He had survived the murder attempt and implicated Putin's agents. Then, astonishingly, he announced he was going back to Russia. Так что в воскресенье, 17 января, я вернусь в Москву рейсом Победы. Встречайте. Now, the question everyone is asking is, why did he go back to Russia? Why did he leave the safety of Germany? You can't be a Russian politician and not live in Russia. He had absolutely no hesitations about this. He made his decision straight away after, um, so while he was still um, at the hospital in Germany, he said he will come back and he, he came back. The Russian writer and commentator Arkady Ostrovsky was on the plane to witness a moment of history. It's no ordinary flight. It's part of that transformation of reality into myth. Navalny's strength is that he senses that he's riding a wave of history and that wave cannot turn back. In Moscow, supporters had gathered to greet him. The authorities had no intention of allowing a hero's welcome. At the last minute, the plane was diverted to a different Moscow airport. Police detained him at immigration and took him straight to a police station where they set up a courtroom. А всем хочу сказать одно, ничего не нужно бояться, бояться можно только своего собственного страха. Пока. Navalny was now at the mercy of Putin. But instead of buckling, he raised the stakes even higher. Two days after he flew in, his team released a YouTube video accusing Putin of gold medal corruption. They had deliberately waited until Navalny was back in Russia. 
Потому что мы не хотим, чтобы главный герой этого фильма думал о том, что мы его боимся и что я буду рассказывать о его самом страшном секрете, находясь за границей. Представляем вам самый секретный дворец в России. Дворец Путина под Геленджиком. Вот он. Called Putin's Palace, the film exposed how a palace costing 1.5 billion US dollars had been secretly built on the Black Sea, allegedly for the president. Шато, винные заводы, устричные фермы и бесконечная роскошь. We have investigated this history and how ownership changed to prove that this palace has been built for uh, Vladimir Putin by his friends, by the oligarchs. And the place is so expensive that it is probably the biggest bribe ever given in the history of bribing. <laughs> Plans revealed a giant underground hockey stadium, a theater and pole dancing room, even thousand-dollar toilet brushes. They say much of it paid for with state money intended for health care. Мы с вами заходим в личное казино Владимира Путина. Во всей остальной стране они запрещены, но здесь-то можно все. Два карточных стола. And all this while ordinary Russians were struggling to make ends meet amidst coronavirus and a stagnant economy. The main message of our investigation is that Putin is probably the richest person in the world. He uses a network, a very sophisticated network of his old friends наше будущее в наших руках не молчите не соглашайтесь подчиняться пирующим злодеям within weeks the video had attracted 110 million views watched by at least a quarter of the Russian population Putin denied any connection to the palace ничего из того, что там указано в качестве моей собственности, ни мне, ни моим близким родственникам не принадлежит и никогда не принадлежало. Никогда. What we know is this palace exists, right? It's real. It's been filmed. It's protected by the FSB, Russian security services, and the border guards. It's a no-fly zone. It's linked financially to Putin's cronies and his friends. If it looks like a duck, if it quacks like the duck and, and looks like the duck, it probably is the duck, right? Now, if what you're saying is right, Putin can never live in this palace now, can he? Thanks to you, because it would show it was his. Yeah, he definitely cannot live there. And I think this is probably why he is most upset with us. Protests erupted in hundreds of towns and cities. The young lawyer Natasha Romi felt she had no choice but to join them. It's about the Putin palace that he built for himself in Gelenjik. So lots of people got really angry about the amount of money that's been, that's been spent. Police detained more than 11,000 demonstrators, then moved onto Navalny's associates. Lubov Sobol from his investigations team was grabbed in the street. Scores of campaign staff were arrested. Many more went into hiding. Even Navalny's personal doctor, Anastasia Vasilyeva, found police storming in to search her apartment. She defiantly played piano, insisting she would not sign anything until she saw a lawyer. It more and more reminds of the like Stalin era uh, criminal cases because like very many people are put to trial simultaneously on quite ridiculous and made up charges. And Vasilyeva was, I would say, pretty much of a collateral damage. 
Navalny's command centre is now outside Russia in the Lithuanian capital, Vilnius. Russia has issued an arrest warrant for Navalny's key strategist, Leonid Volkov. But for now, he's safe. It's actually quite a psychologically challenging thing that I'm mean, enjoying a freedom in a nice European city while your colleagues are there in detention centers or under house arrest. It's, it's, it's not so easy. I mean, I've been detained like nine times. I spent over four months in jails. On February 2nd, Navalny was brought to court for sentencing. The charge is related to the old fraud conviction, which the state had used to stop him running for president. Absurdly, the court found Navalny had breached parole by not reporting to Russian police while recovering in Germany. He was sentenced to two years and eight months in a penal colony. Defiant as ever, Navalny made a love hard gesture to his wife before declaring his contempt for Putin. His speech recorded on a mobile phone. The Kremlin has unleashed a media campaign to discredit Navalny and his team. То, что он многим тысячам тем самым портит жизнь, ему все равно. И за что? За банальное вранье в интересах Запада, не России. К Навальному, мне кажется, нужно просто помнить только одно: за этим проектом, а это проект, стоит просто коллективный Запад. Мы же с вами прекрасно понимаем и помним, что Навальный еще к тому же, помимо американских денег, он же нацик, он просто нацик. О, Навальный – is a controversial figure. In the past, his declarations of support for democracy and rule of law have been mixed with hardcore appeals to nationalists. In this 2007 video, he likened Chechen militants to cockroaches and suggested they be killed. Ну а в этом случае я рекомендую пистолет. Now I was shocked by that video and, and, and we started off on a very bad note. Was and still am very critical about that period. What earned my respect is actually how much he matured and evolved, how much he changes, how much he is capable of change. I'm pretty sure that Alexei Navalny would not do such a video, not in 2021, but even not in 2013, for instance, when he was running for mayor of Moscow. Not even probably in 20. 11, when we started to work together. On February 5th, Leonid Volkov called a halt to further street protests in the wake of mass arrests. The strategy now is to focus on defeating Putin's candidates in the September parliamentary elections. We'll see the electoral campaign going full steam in Russia just in a couple of months. The thing that we are discussing already for a very long time, targeted sanctions against Putin's closest friends and allies, against his wallets, against actually Putin's money. The pivot from winter street protests is welcome news for Natasha Romy, sheltering from a minus 15 degree night in the apartment she shares with her mother and two cats. I have this glimpse of hope that maybe in September elections, maybe something will go different than the usual pattern. I, I have this belief, I have this hope. Because <clears throat> you see, the main thing is that the amount of people today who are against this regime is much higher than, say, five years ago. Then now, this majority of people who were pro-Putin, they're against, they're turning. You can hear the movement, you know? But when her mother, Mariam, joins the discussion, it's clear there's a huge generational split. She's appalled Natasha joined the protests. 
Я да. же не могу ей запретить выйти из дома, она взрослая. Если ей было 7 лет, я бы сказала, сиди дома. Спасибо. А коней на переправе не меняют. Но это просто мое ощущение ситуации. Но то, что не навечно, не навечно. Но пока... Ну пока есть, да. Пока так, да. Пока... И реальная альтернатива, честно говоря, вот реальная альтернатива, прям сильного политика, я пока не вижу. Но это, может быть, я не вижу. Но то, что это нет персонажа, это точно совершенно. Ну, вот такие диаметрально противоположные Суслик. мнения. Суслик. Суслик. И при этом отыски это очень да. люблю. Давай, я тебя тоже очень люблю. Давай. Так, все. М -м -м. Спасибо да. большое. Our parents and our older generation, yeah, they're right that we don't know how bad it can be. But they don't know how good it can be. И несменяемый царь Путин. Навальный's deeply personal attacks on Putin have left no room for retreat. His team is locked into a fight to the end, a fight that could last for years. Leonid Volkov believes the best way to keep Navalny alive is to keep his struggle in the public eye. When as Kremlin hopes, the dust settles a little bit. It's so easy to stage something when, when a person in prison, like, okay, it was a conflict with a cellmate or something like this. This, this is something that could unfortunately happen. So our task is not to let dust settle, not to let uh, Navalny disappear from the radars of public opinion and awareness. From her base in London, Maria Pevchik will continue producing investigative videos on Kremlin corruption. We are, of course, affected by the, by the fact that Alexei has been put to prison. I mean, it's not nice, it's not good. We prefer to work when he's around, uh, but it's not going to stop us from, from doing what we're doing and it's not going to make our work less noticeable or less effective. Before stopping the protests, Volkov engineered one last demonstration. People shining lights on Valentine's Day to show love is stronger than fear. I feel so inspired and it's so empowering to see all those people and think it was a great idea to let people face their neighbors. You can see people from the same house, from the same building with you, who are sharing the same views. Honestly, I'm speechless. I almost cried. It's, it's very, very important to see those people close to you, those lights, you know, it's like Harry Potter magic. The streets of Moscow are now quiet, but the seeds of defiance have been sown as followers of the last true opposition leader prepare for the Russian Spring. Next week, we look at Russia's neighbor, Belarus, where people are also fighting to oust a dictator.